Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. My name is Sarah, also known as Laugh Love Langella. In today's video, this is episode three of the Half Bathroom Makeover series. If you missed episodes one and two, the first one is just a very talkative way of explaining how I came up with the design for the space, what elements I'm planning to use with a mood board. And episode two covered us putting in the flooring and the shiplap. So definitely check those out if you haven't already. Today's video is going to be covering our Pottery Barn dupe vanity. It came out so, so good. I'm so happy with it. This video is not a tutorial. I don't own the rights to the plans. I used Pine and Poplar's plans. They were super affordable, super easy to read and use. There's a SketchUp rendering to help you out too. We had to adjust ours a little bit based off of measurements, but I will have their plans linked down below so you can check those out as well as just other tutorials they have on their site. They're super user friendly, but I'm excited to take you guys along with how we took some wood and made it into this Pottery Barn dupe. So let's get right to it. So with our supply list in hand of what we needed, we headed out to our local Lowe's store and just picked up as much as we possibly could, you know how it always works out with the project, you end up making plenty more trips than you initially planned on and I think at this point we should have stock in Lowe's, we've visited so much. But we came back to the house and unloaded all the lumber that we needed and got ready to start making some cuts. We started off the cuts by doing the side panels as well as the bottom with our track saw. The track saw is honestly so awesome. If there's a secondary saw to a miter, I would definitely pick a track saw any day. It made it so easy and it was nice to be able to just line up the board, check the square of it and just run it right down. There's no hard setups or anything. This is not sponsored. We just absolutely love this product. So funny enough, this is the first time that we cut these panels. There was a second time because I did not translate the new measurements to the cut list properly. So that was 100% my mistake, but thankfully my husband's really great and was just ready to do it a second time. So then we finished cutting up the side panel pieces and off camera we did all of the cuts for the legs and support. Now I'm going to bring all of my cut pieces into the screen porch area so that way I have just a station ready to go so that we can prep them before assembly. So what I'm going to be using today is I got these 220 sanding blocks and then I also have a 400 grit pad. This is going to make it really nice and smooth. The higher the grit number, the smoother your finish is going to be. Now if you are using some rougher or like construction grade lumber, you definitely want to start on lower numbers than what I'm doing. I got some already finished maple and pine and so that way I could kind of skip ahead a little bit but traditionally speaking you'd want to start with like a 60 or 80 grit, work up to 120, 150 and so forth from there. So I'm still busy sanding away. I'm not sharing it because I feel like that's super repetitive. Um, but I just want to share a quick tip. Getting stickers off is so impossible. We got this tough built utility knife, my husband and I, and it is the greatest thing ever. So you can have just a regular box blade, but then you can switch it and you can use it to carefully pull the stickers off. So they sell these on Amazon and Lowe's. I'll have them linked below, but it is so helpful. It also helps get off like the gunk on your stovetop. So it's a great multi-purpose tool.
Okay, so it is a new day now. I ran out of time the other day after sanding. It took me twice as long as I thought it would, but I just wanted to make sure I was taking the time to do it properly because nobody wants to be getting caught up on a cabinet door or something like that. So it was well worth it, but I'm gonna be using this Minwax Pre-Stain. It's in order to help your stain not become splotchy. So it's gonna give it a more uniform and clean finish, but I'm glad I read this the other day because I didn't know this. When you apply it, you apply it with a brush or a rag, wait five to 15 minutes and take off the excess, but you have to apply your stain within two hours of you applying this. So I had no idea about that. So. I was planning on just staining, doing the pre-stain one day and staining the next day, and I'm glad I read this. So I'm actually going to be doing the pre-stain now. I'm gonna to head to the barn and check on the horse. And by the time I get back, it will be under the two hour mark still, and I'll be able to do stain. So before I apply the pre-stain, I'm just gonna go through and quickly wipe down the boards again, just to ensure that there is no leftover dust or residue on them, and then with gloves because let's be real this stuff always makes a mess i'm going to generously apply the pre-stain all right so now i am back from the barn and i'm going to be using the minwax special walnut stain color i have a couple of boards that are very yellow in tone in comparison to others so I'm gonna have to layer on like a kind of gray wash to help tone it out that yellow, just to make sure I'm gonna get a nice even color throughout. So the same as the pre-stain, I'm going to take a rag with some gloves on and generously apply the stain. I did actually end up picking up different one by twos than these yellow ones after i was done staining and everything i just did not like the difference in the color i did try doing a whitewash and it just wasn't coming out how i wanted so i did end up getting some new boards and they matched much better so right now we have these half inch detail pieces that are glued to the plywood and we're just gonna let them dry up before assembling. So the bottom is all attached, now we are going to twist on the feet and here is a quick look at how it has already come together. Oh hi, <laughs> we need to go get the top. Next we dry fit the top of the vanity, that way we could properly measure out to ensure that we were getting the same overhang on each side and the front and back and made a pencil mark so that we knew where to place it after adding the silicone. Then it was time to finally bring in the vanity and that was really like a wow moment to see this whole vision really coming together. Now I know the vanity isn't done, but holy smokes, I love how this is coming together. The last part of the vanity that is not done is adding the doors and the hardware. So I am going through and staining the cane before putting it on with the same special walnut color. Now we are adding the trim to the doors and we are clamping them overnight to ensure that they have more than enough dry time. 
So now I'm gonna take the cane and trim it before we soak it in some water for each of the doors. Just a general rule of thumb when you're using cane, you want to ensure that you have at least a couple of inches top and bottom and side to side of excess to ensure that you have enough coverage for the space. Now I soaked my cane for two hours and I just rolled it the opposite way of the direction it wanted to go. That way, when you go to apply it and it dries, it is nice and tight. So we're gonna use these smaller black hinges I picked up from Lowe's and pre-drill the holes to ensure that the screws go in nice and straight. This is what hung up the project for a couple days, so that's why I'm late posting. The original hinges I grabbed weren't gonna work. Now my husband is drilling out the hole for the cabinet hardware, which is super, super exciting. That means that we are nearing the end of this vanity build. And I picked up these CB2 knobs online. These are the one and a quarter inch size. Then with the door done, I was just far too excited to not hold it up and see what it would look like. But then we got right to it, pre-drilled the holes in the same way we did putting the hardware on the doors. And then I just held up the door to ensure that it would stay as level as it could while my husband attached them. Then we measured and marked where the knobs would go on the fake drawer and attached those as well. And here is how our Pottery Barn vanity dupe turned out. I am so happy with it. My husband is equally thrilled. It is perfect for the space. It's exactly the warmth and character that it needed. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. How do you think we did? Thank you guys so much for tuning into my channel today. I hope that you enjoyed this series. I've been having a lot of fun being able to actually do it in this space and share it with you guys as well. So definitely stay tuned. The next video in the series is going to actually be finishing touches and the reveal of our half bathroom. So I'm super excited to share that with you guys. It won't actually be my next video, but it'll be in the next few. So definitely stay tuned, subscribe if you're not already, and ding that notification bell. It will alert you anytime I have a new upload. As always, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.